This week on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. And the bases are loaded. The Mackenzie Tour hits a grand slam during the second annual Players' Cup Wiffle Ball Classic. Oh, that feels like victory, you know? And then takes the next generation of golfers inside the ropes. Because I'm trying to curve the ball left, I've actually got to swing a little bit inside the line and go a little bit out. During the Future Champions Clinic. We wanted to do something to get more kids inspired to get into the game. The fun continues with a taste of some local favorites. I'll test it. There you go. <laughs> Before competition gets underway at one of the oldest golf tournaments in North America, the Players' Cup. All that and more next. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. The Players' Cup supports a variety of inner city children's initiatives in Winnipeg through its Play Through Foundation. 100% of the proceeds from the foundation are given back to local charities, and since 2010, over $500,000 have been raised through its efforts. I think it's really driven from the values that are instilled in the game. When you think about honesty, respect, the integrity that the game has, uh, I think it's really driven from that. And I think it's also the connection to the community through that giving that really makes us different as a sporting organization. Each year before the start of competition, the Players' Cup offers a junior golf clinic with Mackenzie Tour pros. And this year, Daniel Maziota, John Kelly and Scott Vincent gave these future champions some very personalized instruction. If I was trying to hit it straight, it would more, be more straight on, straight through. Because I'm trying to curve the ball left, I've actually got to swing a little bit inside the line and go a little bit out. We wanted to do something to get more kids out and hopefully help them be inspired to go to the next level or even just to, to get into the game. But the neat part was with when we partnered with Adam Boga and his team was it was more talking about how do we teach some life lessons through golf in this as well. I think these guys come out here they, and girls and they learn about the game. They also learn about some great lessons that can, they can take in the future. And the program has certainly laid the foundation for the next generation of young golfers. When you hit the, your club, it's always really fun. Like, just seeing the golf ball go far, having it go in the hole, that's pretty fun. I hope I'm one of them when I'm older. Just by learning new things can help me improve in my swings and getting farther. With support from programs like the Golf Mentorship Foundation and the Princess Auto Foundation, the Players' Cup continues to make a meaningful impact in Winnipeg. I think the pros to an extent, I mean, they're pretty young themselves, but it reminds them of sort of the innocence of starting the game and then I think to where they are now, but also to see the smiles on these guys' faces when they're walking around and looking up and getting an autograph or watching a great shot and just watching their eyes light up, I think it really makes the week for us, for sure. As day one of competition gets underway at the Players' Cup, California native Matt Picanzo takes command, firing off a 6 under 65 to close out the first round. I had a really good like, feel for the golf course, and um, luckily I kind of looked at the forecast. I knew it was going to be tough today and windy, so I just stuck to that original game plan, laid back, back on a few holes, and, um, and then I was aggressive when I could be. The 34-year-old Mackenzie Tour rookie carved six birdies in a bogey-free round, pushing him up to the top of the leaderboard. He finishes one stroke ahead of Calgary, Alberta's James Love. Love, making his 72nd start this week, briefly ties for the lead. However, a bogey on nine costs him the top spot, and he finishes the day in solo second with a five-under 66. Yeah, I played well. I hit it good. I mean, I hold out on 18 from you know 150 yards, so that helps. Um, but other than that, it was just pretty solid. Rounding out the top five, American Rico Hui closes with a four under 67 and finishes in solo third, while Canadian Ryan Williams sits in a four-way tie for fourth at three under par. Next, on This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada, we catch up with Mike McGowan and Ben Geyer as they check out a local favorite. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We're going to do a little tour and uh, take a look at Brazen Hall here. Let's 
Christian provide all the details. There's a lot, guys. I hope you got your notepads and a pencil. It'll be a test at the end. And later, can Matt Picanzo continue his momentum through the second round? Find out when this is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada continues. This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Brazen Hall Kitchen and Brewery sits right in the heart of Winnipeg, and two McKenzie Tour players beefed up their beer knowledge with a trip to this local favorite. I'm Ben Geyer. I'm Michael McGowan, and today we're checking out Brazen Hall Kitchen and Brewery. Let's go. Come on in. Hey guys, let me introduce you to a great friend of ours and a past NHLer and a actual Stanley Cup winner, Shane uh, Knighty. Nice to meet you guys. Hey, Michael McGowan. Mike, nice to meet you. So I'm Ben Geyer. Ben, welcome guys. Thank you. Good to have you here. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna do a little tour and uh, take a look at Brazen Hall here. We'll let Christian provide all the details. There's a lot, guys. I hope you got your notepads and a pencil. It'll be a test at the end. Okay, we're ready. All right. You like okay, beer? We're gonna. Oh, love it. That's a good start. Well, and we're go. going to put you to work a little bit. We're gonna, in case the golf thing goes so well that you want to retire as a brewer, we're going to teach you how to do it. We brew a whole pile of beer here. And right now, I believe that almost all the tanks are full. I'd like to introduce to you our brewer. This is Jeremy Wells. Hey, hey Michael. Nice to meet you. Jeremy is one of Winnipeg's top brewers. So this is where... Um, uh, Jeremy adds his yeast, and again, yeast is as important to it as any of the other elements. And so he'll add a certain style of yeast that will make it a great lager. Could be a great blonde, which is a, a very light styled ale. We need somebody to test it for us. So which one of you would be willing to be thrown to the wolves? I mean, I'll, I'll test it. There you go. I love blondes. Right? Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> nice. Third sip's better. Is it? Yeah, oh yeah. I'll go for two. You then. gotta go, <laughs> go for three. <laughs> yeah. Very smooth. With the taste of a newfound brew fresh on his tongue, Michael McGowan felt a bit inspired. Mike, you getting ready there? You good? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> All that hard work certainly builds up an appetite. Perfect. So that's on our house-made bread. It's got our own real pickles. That's the great thing about this place is the food. This is always a different culture in each place you go. So like here, I might come back more than once. It's cool to see all these different places and go different places in general. Part of the reason I got involved with these guys, I knew the project they were doing here, and I was like, well, Manitoba needs this, because I'd travel and I'd see all these cool places all around where the U.S., Canada, the brewery, restaurant type thing with the open, the wood, and the textures. And, this kind of fit in exactly what uh, I figured Winnipeg is needing. Winnipeg has the brewing community has grown huge here, but to have the restaurant and, and something like this, I think the atmosphere here is kind of exactly what I envisioned, and that's why it makes it a fun place, and these guys can be entertaining at times. After shared stories of career successes, there's only one way to wrap up the day, with cold brews and the best pub food in Winnipeg. Pine Ridge Golf Club is a picturesque backdrop on day two of the Players' Cup as the field jockeys for position inside the cut line. Kramer Hickok makes a move, climbing into a tie for second thanks to four birdies down the stretch. The 25-year-old finishes with a four under 67. With the T2 finish at the Golf BC Championship on his 2017 resume and a recent two-week break from competition, Johnny Ruiz is confident. I went home and kind of took the first week off, hit balls a couple times, that was it. I went to the lake uh, over the weekend before I came up here, so I was a little rusty in the pro-am and just somehow found it the last couple of days. With a huge par save at the par 3 ninth, Ruiz vaults up the leaderboard, finishing with a bogey-free 6 under 66. He sits just three strokes off the lead. It's a huge difference between 6 and 4 out here, making that putt on 9, the little 8-footer. Every shot counts. You know, made a couple of good saves today. A uh, couple long putts for far and give myself a chance going tomorrow. That's all I could ask for. But they're all chasing Matt Picanzo. A day after shooting a six under 65, the McKenzie Tour rookie cards five birdies against two bogeys for a three under 68 and a two shot lead. There's still a lot of work to be done, so I kind of just stuck to my routine, like my, you know, do my job today. And, um, you know, if somebody went super low and caught me, hats off to them. 
but I was just going to stick to my game plan and keep just being aggressive. And you can get lapped out here real quick. Somebody goes low every single day. A former baseball player, Bacanzo's game plan is simple. Just really focused on you know my spots, like picking targets from the tee, or even if I missed a little bit, I was in a good spot and I could you know at least still kind of attack from there. And you know for 36 holes, it's worked out really well. Jaron Hack, Kramer Hickok, Johnny Ruiz, and J.D. Tomlinson are all in the hunt. James Love and Rico Hui lost ground on day two, but anything can happen on moving day. After the break. All right, let's have a good, clean game. Our players test out their skills with a friendly game on the diamond at the second annual Players' Cup Wiffle Ball Classic. And then the third round of competition gets underway at the Players' Cup. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second annual Players' Cup Wiffle Ball Classic. Another full house tonight for the underdogs taking on the bench warmers. It's on like Donkey Kong. Is that all you got, buddy? Let's get out on the diamond and see what happens. <laughs> you guys are going down. You got no chance, you're already laughing. All right, let's have a good clean game. Underdogs, you guys are in the field. And let's play ball. Before the start of competition, Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada players teamed up with future champions to play out their big league dreams at Shaw Park during the second annual Players' Cup Wiffle Ball Classic. You got a fastball? Yeah. All right, we need to get some outs, all right? All right, let's see what you got. After a conference on the mound, the underdogs change strategy. There you go. Hit, is it a base hit? And the diamond comes alive with the sounds of summer. And the bases are loaded. Let's try to make the rounds. Safe. Another run scores. Into the heart of the order now, and managers come out for a pitching change. Captain Colin Monagle takes the mound to try to put some heat on the underdogs. Another run scores. But after some loose defense by the bench warmers, the underdogs put two more runs on the board. <laughs> Another run scores. Oh, yeah, nice. All right. There it is. All right, everybody, change it up. After top of one, uh, we got a tie game. Good job, guys. Great teamwork. Feels good, you know, we're out there trying hard. We're getting a few outs. You know, they're playing hard. Get it. Base is loaded. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We got exactly who we want up at the plate. Oh, oh. Right where it needs to be. That's Get it. Home, yeah. Man. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, right. <laughs> now that we're keeping score, but I believe it's four to three. There we go. Oh. Despite a scrappy performance by the bench warmers, it wasn't quite enough to overcome the underdogs batting prowess. Oh. Underdogs take the victory. Big thank you to the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada players for coming out tonight. We played some solid defense and we had some studs behind the plate and score a lot of runs. You know, I think I think we're playing pretty good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> MVP! MVP, MVP. MVP. Oh, that feel, it's, It feels like victory, you know? 2-0. Two 2-0 and oh. Two and oh in these wiffle ball games, so <laughs> looking to come back and defend next year. All right. Thanks, guys. Woo! It's moving day at the Players' Cup, but 36-hole leader Matt Picanzo seems to be stuck in neutral. I had a really long day on the greens. I had a lot of good looks today. Just nothing was going in, and I just kept staying patient. It's maybe a little frustrated just from missing putts. The 34-year-old posts a bogey-free front nine and makes the turn at nine under par. But he can't quite get it going on the back nine and finishes with an even par 71, opening the door to the rest of the field. And the chase pack takes advantage. It's hard sometimes, you know, when you start the day with a lead, you're trying to stay aggressive and keep being aggressive. I wasn't paying attention to the leaderboards too much. I just gotta control what I can control, and that's myself and my attitude. And then, you know, when it's all said and done after four rounds, we'll see where that puts me. 
Damian Tellis climbs into a tie for second with an unbelievable back nine charge. After a one over front side, he carved six consecutive birdies down the stretch for a five under 66. Yeah. Taking advantage of impeccable playing conditions at Pine Ridge Golf Club, Rico Hui rebounds from an up and down second round and posts a bogey free four under 67 on day three. In just his third career start, the four-time NCAA All-American from USC also finds himself in a tie for second. Meanwhile, Jared Hack starts his day in a tie for second, but falls back into a tie for fifth with a one under 70 on Saturday. But the round belongs to Dallas, Texas's Kramer Hickok. The 25-year-old is steady on the front nine and makes the turn one off the lead. I really didn't have many birdie opportunities except for the par fives. I probably hit eight feet one time. Hickok, a University of Texas alum and current roommate of Jordan Speed, picks up two more birdies on the back nine to finish at 10 under par with a one stroke advantage over Hui, Picanzo, and Tellus. Oh my gosh, I was mentally fried right now. I mean, I did not hit it very well at all. I uh, just really managed my game really well. Uh, it's what you gotta do out here. I mean, I couldn't have probably scored any better than I did today. I just, uh, you know, I had a lot of 30 foot lags, a lot of up and downs, and just got it in under par somehow. So it's good around. But Sunday pressure is a different beast, and Hickok is being chased by a group that includes current Order of Merit leader, Robbie Shelton. It's Saturday, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll start looking at the leaderboards, but there's no reason for someone else to make you change your game plan. You just got to stick to your own game plan, play, play the best golf you can. Tomorrow will be all about winning the tournament. Manitoba's own Aaron Cockrell is also in the hunt. The crowd favorite climbs into a six-way tie for ninth with a five under 66. Well, I was just kind of thinking four or five under today, coming into the day, give myself a chance. I know it's playing hard. It was fun hopefully to do more of the same tomorrow. Coming up, we catch up with Taylor Hancock, who shows us what's in his bag. And later, can Kramer Hickok keep up his momentum to victory? Or will a new leader rise to the winner's circle? Find out next. This is the Mackenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada. Hi hey everyone, this is Taylor Hancock, and uh, let me show you what's in my bag. A Canadian quarter that I use as my marker. I only use one, have it in my pocket. A buddy of mine, Duke Butler, gave it to me. And uh, it's just a general reminder that I get to play professional golf in the McKenzie Tour. The second thing I use is this cam caddy. It allows me to videotape my swing without having anyone hold my phone. I can just stick it in the ground like this, set my phone on it, go and record myself, and uh, be able to look at my swing and change whatever I need to change. And that's all I got. Several players are within striking distance when the final round of the Players' Cup tees off at Pine Ridge Golf Club on Sunday. But midway through the front nine, it's clear that the battle for the cup is between 54-hole leader Kramer Hickok and current Order of Merit leader Robbie Shelton. Shelton starts the day two off the lead, but gains ground on Hickok with four birdies on the front nine. Thanks in part to a special caddy on the bag the number two player on the order of merit, Lee McCoy. We were staying with the house together, and once he missed the cut, he knew he was going to caddy for me. Um, but it was amazing. He saved me three or four shots today, honestly. I mean, it's just nice to have another player on the bag. Kramer is steady on the front side, but only picks up one birdie and finds himself one down at the turn. Robbie's, I knew he was going to play well. I knew he was going to shoot four or five, because um, he's just that type of player. That's what he does. But things get very interesting on the back nine. Shelton stumbles with a double bogey on 10, relinquishing the lead back to Hickok. And the 25-year-old capitalizes with an eagle at the par five 12th hole, and his lead grows to three. I knew that that was a kind of defining moment for me because I had the lead, and at the beginning of the round, I was just really just fighting really hard just to stay in it. So at that point, you know, I could kind of free myself up a little bit. But Shelton closes strong, picking up two more birdies on the way in to finish in solo second place. His second top three finish in as many weeks. I played well. Just had one hiccup on 10, had a double on 10, and, and besides that, I hit it really good. Didn't make many putts. I think all my birdies were inside two or three feet. 
coming down the stretch didn't make anything, but it was a solid week, and I never can complain about second. Hickok closes with back-to-back -back birdies. An amazing approach on 17 all but seals the deal. And then the University of Texas alum finishes with flair with an improbable bomb on the 72nd hole to win the Players' Cup and his first McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada title. I knew, you know, I could give it a good run. I was trying to make it. But I have a tendency under pressure to leave my putts short. It's unbelievable to be able to go birdie birdie on probably the most nervous I've ever been in my life. So it's nice to be able to look back on that and say I was able to uh, have my best golf when I needed it the most. That's the type of stuff that we dream of, just making putts to win. This is why I came to this tour, right? To try and win and play against, honestly, some of the best players in the world. I mean, these guys are incredible. The talent level is insane. This is getting us ready for the PJ Tour, and there's nothing like it. With the first third of the season in the books, the race for the top five is shaping up. With a good finish in Manitoba, TJ Vogel lands in the fifth spot, while Max Rotliff, a winner earlier this season, hangs on to fourth. Kramer Hickox brings in the third with the victory, while champion turned part-time caddy Lee McCoy sits in second. And with his victory at the Golf BC Championship, followed by a second place finish at the Players' Cup, Robbie Shelton sits comfortably atop the order of merit. To separate myself a little bit was nice. Just keep climbing, that's all you want to do, but still got to play well next week. On the next episode of This is the McKenzie Tour PGA Tour Canada, we head to Thunder Bay, Ontario for the Stahl Foundation Open presented by T-Baytel. Where in 2016, Taylor Moore picked up his first professional title. We'll see you then.